Baha'is don't have missionaries as such, because they, when they go to another country, they're not supported by the faith. Uh, we call them pioneers. And they go with the intention of living in that country, of learning the language, of settling down, of getting a job, uh, hopefully of becoming permanent residents, even citizens if they wish to. And our, our whole approach is not one of, of conversion, but rather of trying to live as closely as possible the Baha'i precepts, the Baha'i teachings, and through your own life, attracting people to the Baha'i faith. Well, what I, can, what I can't understand is um, how, how you, you, you believe like, in, in chastity before marriage and uh, no, no drinking and, and no uh, smoking and, and all those things. Haven't, haven't you uh, read Freud or, I mean, you know, I, doesn't this seem like a terrible con constraint on, on things that are natural and, and uh, beautiful in, in life? The point is that, for instance, a friend of mine from Los Angeles was saying that the, some of the uh, younger kids there, when they were at a Baha'i summer school at Baha'i gathering, would, would ask the adults in charge to tell them how far they could go and then, you know, what they couldn't do. And this isn't the point at all. The point is that what is important to us is human relationships and, and the, the power of mind. And anything which, which uh, beclouds those relationships or gets in the way is to us bad. But it's only by virtue of the good thing. In other words, we're, we're all in favor of being happy. Mm -hmm. It's just how, how you become happy that's important to us. Yeah. Now, it's for this, or partly for this reason that Baha'is don't drink. Mm -hmm. It's not because we're, we're uh, against the, uh, what a lot of people argue drinking does, which is to, to be freer and more, more friendly and more natural. We're for that. But we think you can do that without having to drink. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bird, do you still socialize with the same friends you were with before you became a Baha'i? Oh, yes. You know, it's interesting enough. They, they will say, well, we know what you want. And they'll get the ginger ale and the Coca-Cola. And, and we go to parties and we have the best of time. And they can't understand because we're not charged with anything <laughs> but the spirit. The same way. <laughs> <laughs> there is a change in relationships. And I find all my relationships much better today than I did four years ago. I find I have more friends today. I have more lasting relationships. I find myself uh, liking people today. Each person I've come to find through the Baha'i faith has something to offer, whatever it is, no matter how little it is, there's this offering, and it's beautiful to me. And this is one of the things that held me back in the beginning. I had quite a bit of difficulty accepting the Baha'i faith because I couldn't understand something so simple and beautiful being true. Well, of course, the whole brunt of uh, Baha'i teachings is directed toward the establishment of, of world peace. And you will remember in the tablets of uh, Baha'u'llah, for instance, in the tablets of the kings, there is a great deal that is said about universal peace, about the creation of a peaceful society. I'm uh, beginning to understand uh, quite a bit more about this non-involvement in politics. Can you add anything to this, Jerry, that would enlighten me a bit more and give me more information on this? Well, it's difficult. Um, I think the basic uh, difference between the Baha'i attitude on politics and the non-Baha'i attitude is uh, the basic function of a Baha'i is to solve problems and leave his personality out of it. The whole basis of, of politics is uh, antagonism. Society divides itself into interest groups, into conflicting parties, and they struggle. And out of the struggle emerges the victory of one party over the other. Whereas in Baha'i life, even though we may start with positions which are far apart, every attempt is made to bring people together Yes. to diminish the gap between them. So that at the end of the process of consultation and discussion, everyone is finally unified, and the program is arrived at, which is then universal, which includes everyone, no winners, no losers, one single unified community. We are all the fruits of one tree. We are all the waves of one tree. The day has come when all men 
must live as one. Ye are all the flowers of one garden, and the waves of one sea, and the leaves of one sea. Hey, where are you from? We're from South Carolina, California, Washington, and Arizona. There's a new wind that blows.